Hey everyone, it's Jennifer and I'm back to do another video. Just leaving the bank. And yes, I just got my income tax. <laughs> but I wanted to do a video about my experience with uh, the birth control I mentioned in my previous video called microgestrin. Um, to be exact, it was microgestrin uh, 1.5 over 30. And I kind of wanted to do a video on uh, my experience with that as far as how it correlated to uh, depression and things like that, how it contributed to mine. Oh, this camera's so shaky. I gotta get a better thing for this car. Oh my God. The last one was just as shaky. Jesus. It'll be all right though. Anyways, though, I did want to do a video about that because I wanted to kind of share my experience. Um, I read several reviews, like, on different websites and stuff from other women that had been on it, and most of them were terrible. But uh, before I started on it, I told my mom, she was like, well, let's try it and see. Don't want to just knock it before you try it. Okay, cool enough. So... This was at the end of 2018, and so at the beginning of 2019 is when I started taking it, in January. And it was before I moved in with my boyfriend, uh, who I'm still with, of course, but I was like, you know what? I was one of those people, I was like, I'm going to be a virgin until I get married. And I had every intention to, but I knew, um, I thought he was very attractive. And he was a really nice guy, so I knew I couldn't just live in the same house with him and not do anything for the eternity of while we're not married or whatever. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to be smart because I don't need children. Not right now. And I'm going to find me some some birth control to be on. Right? That's basically the how, it, how I even got on birth control in the first place. So the doctor prescribed me the microgestrin. Uh, Again, is it 1.5 over 30? I'm pretty sure the other ones would have the same effect on me, but I'm not quite sure, so I'm not, you know, I'm just going to specify the one I was on. Anyways, so, started taking it at the beginning of January. Didn't seem to be too much of a big deal. And really, the whole year, I'll, I'll even say this, the whole year I was on it, that was probably one of the worst years of my life. And I did not contribute it to the birth control until the end of the year and find out that's what it really was all along. Um... But, God, shaking, I cannot. Guys, please don't hate me for this. God. But, anyways, so nothing too bad. We moved in with each other around January the 30th. And I'll tell you, it all went downhill between February and March. I started having this numbness on the right side of my body all the time and it scared me so bad i left work in a frenzy i had my boyfriend take me to the hospital and there the doctor's like oh you might have ms and then of course my panic my anxiety was through the roof at this time while i was taking this birth control everything everything made me have a panic attack and when the doctor told me that he was like Yo, you're gonna need to go to your primary care doctor and then they're gonna have to reach out to a um uh, neurologist and you're gonna have to get MRI and I'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god and so basically that's exactly what I did I went through this whole process over the course of between February and April I went through all of this and I went and I had the MRI and sometime in March and at first my insurance didn't want to pay for it um one because I hadn't met my deductible but two because they were like oh you probably don't really need this but the doctor was like, yeah, she needs it just to rule out any, you know, MS or any stroke or any anything. Because when I went to the hospital initially, they thought it might have been a stroke. That's what I thought it was myself because that's what the symptoms were like. I numbness all over here. My face felt really just droopy. So they gave me like some prednisone and some something else that wasn't worth a damn. Um, didn't help me. <laughs> and I went to the neurologist and he went ahead we got the MRI in about March and MRI came back completely negative everything was great no problem no tumor no nothing no stroke no MS no brain lesions no nothing I was like and I'm sitting there because the way that I feel is not matching what they're telling me they're like oh it's just stress it's anxiety and I'm sitting here like see there they don't 
don't want to, I'm black, and they don't like to treat black women right in the medical system, which of course they don't, but that's what I was thinking at the time, I'm thinking that's what it is, and that's ultimately not what it was. Um, there, every time I went, stress and anxiety, so I'm still, you know, it would come and go, but it would really feel like that the whole year, and I would cry, it made me so upset and depressed, it made it so much worse, because I had that feeling on top of, I had that feeling all the freaking time, on top of being depressed or anxious, that, like, I would have been probably anyways, and so... Went back to the neurologist again towards the end of the year for a follow-up. I was actually supposed to have done a follow-up way before that, but I did a follow-up uh, at the end of the year. Went back and were like, yeah, this is sounding like stress and anxiety. But then again, I'm like, freaking every time, yes, I just ran over a box. Every time something is wrong, they want to tell me some stress and anxiety. And I'm like, yes, I know I deal with both of those, but shoot this physical pain I'm feeling shouldn't have anything to do with my with stress nor anxiety that's what I thought so I'm like okay these doctors are all letting me down nobody's getting to the bottom of the cause what's going on here and around November I started to just think you know what is it that changed because I did not used to feel like this ever um, even though, like I mentioned in a previous video, I have not been the same since my mom had brain surgery in 2016, but I was getting better. This just put me all the way to the bottom. Anyways, this is just the story of the numbness and the, the issues I had physically while I was on the birth control. Keep in mind, I also had migraines all the time, migraines with aura all the time. Um, and I've always had migraines, but that made it worse being on that birth control anyway so I November I'm like okay what is it that's changed what is it that is not the same since before I moved out of my parents house to when I moved in with my boyfriend and the only thing I can think of was the damn birth control and I was telling my boyfriend and he was already not really like a for birth control kind of guy this person in front of me is absolutely terrible this is the slowest person I have ever witnessed and he's turning to but anyways, y'all don't mind me. Um, like I was saying, oh, the lights still green. <laughs> Lucky me. Y'all can tell I get off track easily. But as I was saying though, yeah. So by December, I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me look at some more reviews of this birth control because I'm pretty sure they're updated. Some of the reviews are way more recent, you know, than when I went to look at them, like, at the beginning of the year. And, or at the end of the previous year, which was 2018. Sure enough, most of the reviews were like, if you have depression or anxiety as it is, or any mental illness of any kind, do not take this. Most of the women are saying that, or they're like, this ruined my life. This was terrible. And I'm like, you know what? And then I was looking at uh, some video on YouTube. This girl was like, oh, her friend had a stroke from, uh, you know, when she was taking her birth control. And I was like, oh, hell no. And so I said, you know what, I'm done. About December the what? Third or fourth. I was done. I was like, I'm done. I'm not taking this anymore. Whatever. I still don't want to have a child. So I'm going to have to use some type of contraceptive, whatever the fuck. But still, I'm like, you know, I cannot be on this birth control anymore sure enough it took a while because I was only four years so it had probably built up in my system um at least all those hormones and whatnot that are in it over the course of about the next few months because now it's February it's almost March it's February the 26th today so yeah over the course of the next month I definitely noticed a change in myself as well as, like I mentioned before, I started using the BetterHelp app with uh, speaking with a counselor and her whole approach on, you know, logical thinking and things like that. That's really helped. As well as me having a closer relationship with God, that's also helped a lot. But I would say what has definitely helped me the very most is not being on that birth control. I feel like more like me now than I did the entire year of 2019. Now, let me tell you how it made me feel mentally. 
the whole year, I felt like a zombie. Like somebody had was in my body with me and it was just, they were just the most negative person. And I just couldn't, I could like, even though I would be having a good time, I wasn't having a good time. I was trapped in my mind. I was very trapped in my mind. I was just stuck, stuck in fucking woo woo world. Um, just dead, just a zombie. It's really what I felt like. The perfect word to describe it was a zombie. That's what the hell it was. Cause I was there, but I was not there. And it was really, that's the only time in my life where I just really felt like that. I would never take that birth control. I would never refer anybody to that birth control. Now, what works for someone else may not work for me. What works for me may not work for someone else. I get that. So, hey, you know, take it if you want to. But I wouldn't do it. Um, Especially if you have any history with mental illness of any kind whether that be depression anxiety bipolar schizophrenia whatever it is i wouldn't do it um because it just ruined my life for the whole year of 2019 so for example me and my boyfriend went to the wax museum now it was his first time going i had gone before but i always you know i enjoyed it i love the wax museum i was so out of it that even though it was my idea to go you know, it's like a, it's not like a tunnel, but it's like a, a pathway. You walk through and you get to the end. It's like you start off with one celebrity and end with, usually you end with Michael Jackson at the one that I go to. That's what we ended with, I think, was Michael Jackson for the celebrities. And then you get into uh, freaking uh, the Wizard of Oz people. And then you get into uh, famous uh, Jesus. They have the Jesus exhibit in mind. Uh, they have the, the white Jesus exhibit, but they have it in there. Uh, then they have, I think, the presidents and then they have it's like that so you get to the different you know celebrities presidents people like that people then you get to the hitler part where hitler and stalin are and that's the end i think that's the end but anyways i already knew that but i was excited because i know that switches around some and they had but i was literally my idea to go had a great time previously when i went with my family zombie zombie my boyfriend thought we were really having a great time and he was so like it kind of upset him when I got home and I was like, Frank, I was not enjoying myself. He was like, well, damn, what is, that? what is it that I can do? There's nothing you can do. That's all I would tell him. He would get so discouraged, but it was so true. It was like, there's nothing that you can do. And that was a big problem over the year of 2019 for both of us. I would just be so just dead, dead inside until it all came to a head between my job and me taking that birth control and me just overthinking life in general every single day of my life. In October, that's when I became suicidal. That's when I knew I had to make a change. Something was wrong. So I kept taking the birth control, but I'm like, why am I not getting any better? I have no reason to be suicidal. I have no reason to want to end my life. I have a pretty good life. But then again, I know dealing with depression, there doesn't have to be a reason. That's just how depression does. But I'm like, usually for me, I know myself, when I get depressed, there's a direct correlation to something else. So, yeah, I knew something was wrong. So, basically, now that I've stopped the damn birth control, I feel so much more alive. I can be in the moment. I can actually watch TV now, guys. That sounds so ridiculous. I can watch TV. I stopped being able to watch TV. You know, I was enjoying shows and stuff like that. I would be looking at the show, but off in, on planet Funkadelic. I'm telling you, I was on another planet. Um, I don't even know. It's just, you got to be there to understand what I'm really saying. And I don't want nobody to be there. <laughs> that was terrible. But it's like, really like that. Like, oh my God, it's just, I'm there. I know what I'm doing, but I'm like, like that all the time. Like just off. That's what I was feeling like inside, just like a zombie of some sort. And I would say that after having that experience, it has definitely turned me off to any birth control. I went to my doctor and she was like, well, let's try a birth control that doesn't have uh, estrogen in it. Fuck all that. I don't want none of it. I'm sorry. I don't want a child either. I have to figure something out, but I don't want to take that anymore. And I would not encourage anyone, at least who deals with any mental illness to take it because it made mine so much worse. So much worse. That was one of the worst years of my life. I'm telling you. Anyways, though, guys, I reached my destination and I've probably been talking too long, so I need to get out. Um, the next video I do will probably be, 
I don't know, I might actually share what really kickstarted my whole journey with depression and anxiety at all. Um, which is really when my mom had brain surgery. I'd always been an anxious kid. I've always dealt with stuff like that. But that, yeah, that's a pretty, yeah. But anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, I hope you did. You should like it. Uh, if you want to comment, that would be great. Uh, if you want to subscribe, I'd appreciate that too. But uh, thanks for watching the video and I'll be back again soon.